Hey guys, and welcome back to the Kenwood Kids Club, live from the Mr. Baker's Cakes Kitchen. But not for long, because this week is our first takeover from one of our brand new junior ambassadors. Zach is going to be showing you how to make his ultimate cookies, and I've got to be honest guys, they look absolutely delicious. So I guess, without much further ado, let's roll the footage. Take it away, Zach. Hey everyone, it's Zach here, and welcome back to another episode of the Kenwood Kids Club. In today's episode, I'm showing you guys how to make my ultimate cookies. I know you guys are gonna absolutely love this recipe. It's one of my all-time favorites. The cookies are chewy, they're chocolatey. You're just gonna love them. If you are baking along today, make sure to send your bakes to the Kenwood Kids Club website for the chance to be this week's star baker. And of course, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. But without further ado, let's get baking. Okay, so first things first, I've got my Kenwood K mix that I'm gonna be using today with the paddle attachment. And I've also got my mum over in the corner supervising me just to make sure that everything is safe. So I've got 120 grams of soft unsalted butter. Now, when we say soft and unsalted, it basically means that the butter has no salt in it. Um, and soft butter would basically just mean butter that's at room temperature. So before you get baking, just take your butter, and, butter out an hour or so before. Then to this, we're gonna add in 120 grams of carbs of sugar and 120 grams of light brown soft sugar. And then we're just gonna mix this together until it's creamed and it's light and fluffy. And I'm starting on quite a low speed. And then gradually, once the butter starts to get combined, I'm gonna increase the speed. So currently, as I just mentioned, I'm going to go through it all. We've got our butter in here, our cast sugar, and the light brown soft sugar. So we're using two different types of sugars, cast sugar and light brown soft sugar. Now, the light brown soft sugar is definitely a key ingredient in this as it really helps you get that chewy texture of the cookie and it adds so much flavour. So now I'm just going to gradually increase the mixture of my speed. coming together nicely. I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds until the butter is well incorporated with both of the sugars. And then for your last 10 seconds, you really turn that speed up so you can really get it together. Okay, there we go. So now that my butter is creamed together with my sugars, it doesn't have to be too creamed together as long as you roughly do it. And um, we're then gonna crack in an egg. Now hopefully when I crack this in, I'm not gonna get shell in there, because this often does happen. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna crack my egg on the side of my Kenwood. And then I'm just gonna separate it, like that. And no egg went in. So hopefully when you're doing this, no egg will go in. But if it does, then just fish it out, it's absolutely fine. It happens to the best of us. And then we're just gonna mix this again until our egg is well incorporated. And again, start with a low speed and then we gradually increase. And then whilst that's mixing in, we're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And again, the vanilla, the vanilla extract, that's just gonna help add more flavor to your cookies. And now I'm going to increase my speed. I'm going to mix it now for about 20 seconds. Again, I'm increasing my speed now. And I think that's done now. So now where we've added in our egg, we've got a really nice smooth mixture, which is just what we're looking for. 
and I'm going to scrape all of this mixture of my paddle attachment. This is how it should be looking and I'm just going to use a spatula and scrape the sides of my bowl and this is really important that you do this because you want all of the ingredients to get well incorporated and then once it looks something like that you can add in your flour. So here is 250 grams of self-raising flour. I know we're making cookies and I'm using self-raising flour, but trust me on this one, it really helps you get a chewy cookie because the cookies rise in the oven and when you take them out, they sink back down, which resembles a really nice chewy cookie, which is just what I love. So we're gonna add in our flour now, as well as a pinch of salt. So the salt is just going to add a bit more flavour and really just help balance out all of the sweetness. And now this is going to go back onto my Kenwood, like so. And as always, right now it's more important than ever that you start on a slow speed because if you go straight in there and the Kenwood is too high, you're going to get a flower cloud, it's going to go everywhere. But a little tip for what you can do is I actually do this whenever I make buttercream because icing sugar goes absolutely everywhere and it's not fun. Um, I actually like to get a tea towel and put it over my Kenwoods and then I'm still starting on a low speed. Um, and then I'm gonna gradually increase that and hopefully the flour that way isn't gonna go everywhere. So that's a really good tip that you guys can note down and I definitely do recommend it. Oh, okay. So now we're just mixing this until our cookie dough has formed and then we're getting onto something super exciting. So whilst that's mixing, I'm gonna get a little drink because I'm gasping. That's all this talk I'm doing. Right. There we go. Oh, a little bit longer actually. So now I'm gonna take the tea towel off because the flour is mostly incorporated now. And as soon as it forms a dough, you want to stop. Uh, because if you do over mix this, you do um, risk the chance of your cookies coming like quite tough, and you don't want that. Okay. Right, here we go. Oh, can't even lift it up now. Okay, so again, just like we did last time, I'm going to scrape all of this dough off the paddle attachment. And what you now have here is basically a regular cookie dough so you know it's just a plain cookie dough we've got nothing added into it and um, i'm going to scrape around the sides like so just to sort of bring it together a little bit more and there you go but now this is a fun bit and this is one of the reasons why i absolutely love baking so you now need 100 grams of whatever you like and you can add this into your cookie dough so you could use dried fruit, you could use chocolate, you could use Smarties, you could have your favourite sweets, you know, you could get creative, put a bit of dried fruit in there, and a bit of chocolate, you know, you can get creative with different flavours and textures and try out loads of different things. And I think that's so important for baking, just having fun with it and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, so you need 100 grams of whatever you'd like. So I've gone for two of my, well, they're basically the same thing, but I'm such a chocoholic, I love chocolate, um, and I've gone for 50 grams of dark chocolate, as well as 50 grams of Smarties, because who doesn't love Smarties? And what I like about the Smarties is they add in a lot of color um, into the cookies. So now I'm gonna add in um, my chocolates. And then on the lowest, lowest speed, um, we're going to put our bowl back onto our Kenwood. And then, as I mentioned, you want to do this on a low speed because we want to avoid mixing this as much as possible now. Um, we're just going to carefully fold our chocolate through. And it looks really good at this stage. Okay. And again, you might have to stop it halfway through because now it's a dough, it's all coming up to the paddle attachment. So I'm just gonna stop it halfway through uh, to take it off. And then I'm gonna do that one more time. And there you go. Okay. 
And there we go. Your cookie dough should be looking something like this. Really, really nice. And this is what I love about the Smarties because it's added a whole new level of colour into our cookie dough. There we go. And I've just realised this, and I completely forgot to mention it at the start, but you want to preheat your oven to 180 degrees or 160 fan or gas mark three. So get your oven preheated because I completely forgot to say that. And um, that's fine, it'll preheat in time. Okay, so now we've got our dough here, we're ready to shape it. Um, so I mean, really, you could shape it however you want. But I'm going to do regular picky circles. So here I've just got a baking tray and I have lined it with some greaseproof paper so our cookies won't stick to the tray. And now I'm just going to make some space because it is an absolute mess down here with all of the bowls. Um, so I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So, because I am such a perfectionist, I like to weigh out, weigh out my cookies so they all be a similar sort of size. And that's what I've done here. You can see they're all the same, um, and I've got a really nice cookie shape. So, what I like to do is to get them all the same, I actually weigh my cookies out. Now, I weigh them out to 45, 50 grams. I think that gives you a really good cookie shape. And you'll get around this size, so quite a decent sized cookie. But if you want really big cookies, you could do 75 gram balls. Or if you want little tiny cookies, you could half it and then do 25 gram balls. But it's completely up to you what size you want your cookies. So, I'm going to get myself a spoon and turn on my scales. Um, and start weighing out my cookies. Right, there we go. So usually it's a it's about a tea tablespoon even. And then just want to put it on there. Right, that's 52 grams, but I'm a perfectionist, so that's not perfect. Um there we go. Yep, 48 grams that will do. And then you wanna just get them on your baking tray. Now, personally, depending on the size of your baking tray, I would recommend putting six on there, no more than six, because when you do put these cookies in the oven, they will spread out. Um, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that once I've finished doing my, once I've finished weighing out my cookies. Right. The grams. But obviously, as I said, you do not need to weigh them out. It's just because I'm a perfectionist and I like everything to be perfect. And actually, something that I think is pretty cool is because I've weighed them out um, to all of the same size, they're actually bake at the same time. Because if you think about it, if you had one cookie that weighed 25 grams, but then one cookie that weighed 75 grams, the 25 gram cookie is obviously going to bake a lot quicker. Um, and then you'd risk it burning or you'd risk the larger cookie being underbaked. So, now I've got my six cookies onto a baking tray like that. And you can see how I've spread them out a lot because they are going to spread in the oven. Uh, but something else I'm just going to do is I'm actually... Right, let's try and do this on camera. So, I use the palm of my hand and I just flatten down these cookies. You can go like that until they then sort of look, I think you can see that, until they then are slightly flattened down. And um, the reason I like to do this is because obviously they are gonna spread in the oven, but I just find doing this sort of helps the cookies um, spread out. Right. Okay, and now I'm just gonna wash my hands because my hands are now very greasy from that. And I haven't weighed them all out just yet. I'm just doing this one to show you. But if you were to weigh them out to around 45, 50 gram balls, I think this recipe makes around 18, um, which is amazing, 18 cookies. You can either eat them yourself or share them with your friends and family. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay, right. So now I've got my cookies flattened down. I personally like to do this again to take them to a whole new level. Um, so obviously I put Smarties and chocolate in my cookies. 
Now on some of them, more than others, you can see the Smarties there and the chocolate. But what I like to do is, I've actually got 10 grams of Smarties and 10 grams of dark chocolate. And these have just been crushed up. And now what I'm gonna do is place them on the top of the cookies. Um, so when they come out of the oven, like these ones for an example, you can really see the Smarties on the top and the chocolate on the top. So on this one, and what I like about this again, I feel like I've said this a hundred times, but with the Smarties, you can then do loads of different colors and see what colors go together well. And this is definitely the fun. Apart from the eating what you've made, this is definitely the fun part about baking. You know, just getting creative, playing around, trying out new different things. And as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the video, it would be so, so great to see all of your beautiful creations over on the Kenwood Kids Club website. So if you have been baking along, do make sure to send us those for the chance to be at this week's Star Baker. Okay. Hmm. Right, they're looking really good actually. And it just jazzes them up a little bit as well. Okay. Right. I'm going to add in a few more actually. You can never have enough Smarties. Um, okay. Right, there we go, I'm really happy with them. Um, so now I've just added on some extra chocolate on the top of my cookies, and it just makes them look a lot more appealing to the eye. Um, but obviously you guys can use whatever you would like. As I mentioned at the beginning, you could use dried fruit if maybe you wanted to make them a little bit healthier, or you could use nuts. Just get creative with them, because that is what baking is all about. Um, so now these are ready to go in the oven, but make sure an adult is there to help you when putting them in the oven because ovens are really hot and you do not want to burn yourself. And you also want to make sure that you've got oven gloves on. So I'm going to get my oven gloves. And you want to bake them for around 10 to 12 minutes until the corners of the biscuit are nice and golden like that. Um, now, when you see them in the oven, they will be quite um, risen and puffed up. Now, that's because of the self-raising flour we put in. However, just trust me, they will come back down and look like nice cookies like this. Um, and they may seem a little bit raw when you take them out. That is absolutely fine. Um, after 10 to 12 minutes when they're golden around the side, still take them out. Um, and what, what will happen is when they cool down, the cookie will firm up. And again, that's just how they end up really nice and chewy. So we're now gonna put them in the oven. Right, there we go, very excited. And also, I've just gotta say this, they taste absolutely amazing when they're straight out of the oven whilst they're gooey and that chocolate's melted. And um, yeah, that's when I absolutely love them. So after 10 to 12 minutes, they should look something like this. Um, but you wanna wait for them to fairly cool before you take them or you'll pick them up and they will just fall apart. Um, but yeah, these are the cookies I made earlier. So I did a Maltese one here and then I did a chocolate one. But in the batch I've just made, I got creative and did Smarties and chocolate. But obviously it's totally up to you guys. I think I'm going to have a chocolate one now to eat because I they have been sitting here for this whole video. I don't know how I haven't managed to eat one yet. But here, you, oh my God, just look at that. And they are the chewiest cookies you will ever. They would go nice with a glass of milk actually. That's what they'd go nice with. Right, I'm going to try some of that chocolate on. They are so good. They're just the perfect chewy cookie recipe. They're super easy as well. They didn't take us that long at all. Honestly, they taste so, so good.
Mm. That was amazing. These cookies are the, they're literally the best thing in the world. I want them all day, every day. But yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching and even baking along. As I've mentioned a couple of times in this video, if you have baked along, make sure to send your photos into the Ken Kenwood Kids Club website for the chance to be this week's star baker. And I'd love to see them on Instagram, so you can find me at zapbakes underscore, and you can also find Kenwood at Kenwood World, so make sure to tag us in your recreations. But without further ado, happy baking, and I hope you're all well. Bye, everyone. Okay, so first of all, how good did those cookies look? I'm definitely going to need to go and bake up a batch of Zach's ultimate cookies as soon as I wrap up this video today. First of all, thank you so much to Zach for sharing your first tutorial with us here, right here on the Kenwood Kids Club. I think you'll all agree that that was absolutely fantastic and there were so many amazing hints and tips to just generally help you improve your cookie baking as well. So thank you so much to Zach. As he mentioned a fair few times, if you do have a go at baking along with Zach's ultimate cookie recipe this week, then don't forget to head to the Kenwood Kids Club website at www.kenwoodkidsclub.co.uk and upload the results of your bake. Not only would we absolutely love to see them, but also they will enter you into the competition for this week's Star Baker of the Week, which will of course earn you one of our exclusive Kenwood Kids Club goodie bags with all of those amazing goodies that I showed you a couple of weeks ago, including your very own Kenwood Kids Club apron. Now, if you enjoyed Zach's video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here at the Kenwood Kids Club, do make sure you hit that big red subscribe button as well. We will be back at the same time next week, 4 p.m. on Thursday for another live video. And I think, I don't know about you, but it's time to do something savory because we've been doing a lot of cakes and cookies recently. So yes, I will see you at the same time next week. And until then, take care guys and happy baking. Bye.